I'm Dave of Dave Skinks, and in today's video, we've had a lot of people commenting about our new rack systems. These are the 55 inch by 33 inch six tier tubs from Freedom Breeder. Obviously, we've got a clean plexiglass window to give the reptiles a view, but how do we get the lights in? People have been asking me about that electrical setup and that process, and so I wanted to kind of showcase what we do here today. You'll need a few electronic components, which we'll show you in a minute, uh, but that's pretty much it. It's pretty self-intuitive, and I'll be explaining what we're doing and where we got the parts, and you can see more in the description down below. So for transparency, I'm probably $210 all in on this light conversion. First thing we'll need is not an electrical component. Well, you'll need a drill. Hopefully you have one of those already. But the thing you'll probably need to get is a 7 8 boring out drill bit like this one here. This type of drill bit is perfect to cut through the high durable plastic most rack tubs are made of. This exact size drills the proper size hole you need to fish and feed your LED lights through. The boring out drill bit works because of an inner circle bit that sinks into the surface first and then a more shallow outer ring of teeth that creates the larger hole. Now if you go with different LED lights than me, you'll have to measure and determine the best size bit for you because you don't want to avoid a guess and check with this DIY modification. When you're drilling anything with a normal bit, you can start small and go bigger as needed, but this type of bit does not work the same way. It needs surface area to grab in the center. So try to get it right the first time. 7 8 is what I recommend. Let's take a look at what's going on on the inside of this enclosure. You'll see the lights come in and they come out the back, uh, the back left wall that hugs the same side the heat is on. Kind of does this double back, double stack. I went with a DC 24 volt single white color, 50 foot single spool. 274 lumens LED tape light. The light comes with a blue strip on the back and it's pretty good but it won't last long against the humidity and substrate dust um, that accumulates in a naturalistic habitat. So the company I got the lights and the power unit from also sold these brackets that screw in to keep the lights up. Uh, come to think of it, those those brackets actually needed a special drill bit too, like a 1.0 Phillips head. I think the 2.0 Phillips head is the standard small ones that come with most tool kits, so you had to get a special one for that too. Um, to, to string them up, uh, or just put in the brackets, definitely pre-drill your holes. Um, then for, for the bigger holes, also pre-drill those too. But decide where you want your power unit stored depending on if you want your power supply to live near the top or on the floor, you start at the opposite end and finish where you want the electricity hooked up. So I started with the bottom enclosure because I wanted my electricity to be stored near the top. The first one will not need to double back and double stack. You will actually just have it at a starting point inside the tub, exit out the pre-drilled hole in the back, all the others though you'll do the double back the double stack it's going to go in the hole one way kind of flip around stack on top of each other go back and exit out the same hole and then go up to the next level um, and you'll you'll want to leave enough slack or enough excess uh, so like pull pull one of the drawers out and then use that as a measuring distance to see how much extra slack you need so you can get the drawers open without it disrupting the flow of the LED tape light. And with the extra slack, just six tubs, you will hit that 50 foot mark or pretty close to it. Uh, another option is to just have individual lights per enclosure and just daisy chain them all together, but I thought that was going to be a little bit more dangerous, so I just went with one single light tape. Now for the electrical components, and again, like all my videos, check the description down below. I've got links and chapters for you. It's important to know both the lights and the electrical components, and, and there's a rating system for everything in the LED hobby. Um, how waterproof it is. 
I aimed for IP68. That's the highest waterproof rating. It can actually be submerged in water. But they don't make a lot of IP68 products that are inexpensive. So the next best is what's rated IP67. It's still pretty waterproof. Uh, a lot of American-made stuff is IP67. A lot of American-made stuff is also AC or alternating current. But most stuff in the LED hobby comes from China, where DC or direct current current is the norm. So whichever you go with, just make sure all of your components are the same and compatible. Same with uh, same with voltage. Um, and then something I didn't realize about these power units is they automatically put out 100%, but they're only rated for up to 80% output. So it will work without a controller, but it's like having a car without brakes and you're going to have a shortage or a blowout or in my case, an actual burn. So definitely get a controller. The first thing we're looking at is the power supply. Sometimes it's referred to as a driver or transformer. Robots in disguise. They're usually interchangeable terms. The LED hobby is, is global. And it's a little goofy. Everybody expects you to know everything already. So I'm going to do my best to try to explain what, what I wish I knew and took me a little bit to piece together. Um, so let's take a look. This, this power unit, it's an IP67 rated DC 24 volt power supply. Perfectly compatible with our lights. Then we have the controller, also known as a dimmer. Uh, this is a 6-24 volt 15 amp. DC controller with RF remote seen here a lot on the market wants to connect via an app or Wi-Fi but if I'm out of town and just want to make it easy on whoever's watching the skinks or let's say the internet's down I felt a remote controller was going to be the best option and this too an IP68 remote controlled controller with direct current at an affordable rate was surprisingly tricky to find but I actually found an American company who has them uh, again links down below now that we have all of our parts it's time to get them all wired up the lights connect to the controller which connects to the power supply which plugs into your timer and then your surge protector um, if you've never done this before it's, it's not crazy they didn't try to trick you red connects to red black connects to black and then always, 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 three always, make sure when you're working with electricity, everything is unplugged. Absolutely must be unplugged to work on. With DC, you'll get a nasty shock if you touch live wire. So we've already got three of the four connections hooked up. And so I'll show you how we will hook up the last one for you. So you want to peel back the rubber casting um, with, with the knife. That's what I use. Um, so you can take the two copper wire ends from each different device and kind of twist them together. And then you want to cover them and protect your new connection with a few things, either uh, just electrical tape, not advised, but it'll work. Um, actually, you'll definitely just want electric tape on hand. It's good to like kind of seal any of these connections in. Um, another option are these waterproof electrical butts. Again, seal at the end with your electric tape. Links down below. Uh, what I like the best, though, I'll demonstrate for you. These are these uh, shrinky dink heat connectors. Plastic outside, steel center, and the core that acts as a conductor. Stick the two ends in. We're going to add a little bit of heat. Get them nice and soft. Stick them in, and, and we're going to crimp the heated ends just to hold everything in place electric tape also wouldn't hurt to kind of seal it off now I'm definitely doing this in a stupid way um, you can use real tools especially if you're going to like strip the wire I think the device is called a wire stripper you know what? forget forget all my advice I'm just making up the story as I go and if we did everything right as soon as we plug it in we should have power All right, here goes nothing. We did it right. Voila.
Sha 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 sha. Do you think you got what it takes to be a blue tongue keeper? Karate chop. Karate chop. Do you want to see more content just like this? Sha sha sha. Ha sha sha sha. Ha. Then karate chop that subscribe button down below. You can also follow us on Instagram. Ha sha 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 sha. On Facebook. And by messaging us on our main website at www.daveskinks.com. Thanks for watching.